Hi everyone and welcome to the first session in this track one of the Multic Conference Global 2021. I'm your track lead for today. Oluwatu Miwolabi is my name and um, we'll be having our first section right now. So our first section is going to be handled by Nick Benhoff. Nick Benhoff is the CTO at Drop Solid and is leading the technical team here in technician in combination with the research and development team. Um, Nick has been involved in the Drupal open source community for over 12 years, but touched a lot of more technologies than just that, such as cloud infrastructure and depth of his philosophy. Aside from technology, he tries to be a good mentor to the Scrum Masters and technical architect by embracing change and to lead by example. He is also advocating open source and especially the open source project Drupal. That software crossed his path during his studies and took up a significant part of his career when he started to use it for professional purposes in several Drupal focused development agencies. Please welcome Nick Venhoff, who will be talking to us today about open and personalized user journeys with Multic. Drupal and Apache Unomi in a GDPR era. Hi, good Hi. morning, everybody, and welcome to Multicon Indeed to this first session. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I hope you're all ready uh, and awake uh, for this session. So let's get started. Indeed, we'll be talking about open and personalized user journeys uh, with Multic, Drupal, and Apache Unomi in a GDPR era. Um, all of the, the things that I will be showing um, also have uh, an open source um, version and also is possible to actually build these user journeys yourself. And that's all in the nature of this open source conference. Um, it's not fun if you can't do it yourself, obviously. Yeah. Um, but before we dive into that, um, uh, let's give you a little bit of an agenda of what we'll be talking about. Um, it's kind of the shift of what we're seeing online. Uh, so that um, a global market doesn't equal that everybody is the same. Um, also, okay, once you are there, like how do you even measure uh, what you're doing? Which uh, if you have used Matic already today, you know that if you start to create very advanced campaigns um, for very different segments, it, it gets rather tricky to measure um, if you're uh, being successful and if actually you're target audience uh, is happy with the results or at least the communication that uh, came to them. We'll give you a demo of the technologies together um, and a bonus also in that demo uh, for those that have seen this session before. Um, and then a bit of the conclusion. Maybe a bit about myself, uh, as um, was explained already, I've been indeed active in the open source world for quite a while now. Um, and I'm also very interested in uh, yeah, widening up that scope of uh, yeah, digital experiences. It's still a very vague word, but it means go beyond a CMS. Uh, so uh, go beyond content, um, spread out that content, make sure that the, the people that are interacting with your brand actually have the means to interact with your brand across different channels. So uh, be before uh, I tell you a lot more about that, let's look at a little video of an introduction of what that actually means. Um, you won't hear audio, but I'll explain uh, what you are seeing. This is not about, uh, oh, wait one second to disable this audio if I can, yeah. So what you will see is a mock-up of um, what personalization could mean. Um, uh, including marketing automation. So a person comes in through different channels and the person could come in through Google with audio or they could come in through Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, which is your inbound channel. Um, you, like the person clicks on it and then uh, ta-da, this person sees the website of your brand. And in this case, uh, it's a person that is looking for information about either flower pieces or uh, yeah, we still don't quite sure what this person is looking for, but you can see that there is information that is gathered based on the, the pattern that this person is executing on the website. Eh? So on the left, you can see that there is like this um, progress bar 
and the progress bar goes to the right uh, for one of these personas that we defined on this website. And in this case, uh, this person is showing interest in a workshop, um, still is browsing around, um, not necessarily interested in buying. So we classify this person in the segment of Explorer. Um, this could happen either using assisted technologies with AI or machine learning or by manual uh, rule building uh, in uh, the personalization software. More about that later. We see that there was a form. The form actually came from a Mautic form. The person adds, uh, adds their email address and the person is no longer anonymous. So we have what we call a conversion. Um, this is a very simplified view of uh, a user profile could be in Mautic or could be in a customer data platform. And we can see uh, that this person was classified as that specific segment based on the interactions with the site, not just the, the pages that this person visited. Um, and we can see what uh, he or she downloaded or which pages that um, he or she visited. Very similar to Mautic profiles. Now, the next time this person comes on the website, we know who she is. We know what the segment is that she belongs to. So we can actually also change uh, where the form is for the next conversion for this person. Um, so we can change the layout of the website. All these forms are still Mautic forms, um, and you will see that in a demo. But the, the way that we lead people towards conversion, or in other words, uh, where we actually adjust towards our end user um, and make sure that the digital experience is better for them, yeah, that's what we try to uh, achieve. And it goes beyond that. Um, it also goes towards email uh, marketing. We suddenly know also in the marketing automation or in Matic, which segment this person belongs to. So we can send personalized emails or emails with tailored content uh, through Matic or through other digital channels. So that's uh, what is it all about. Uh, so um, if hopefully that's clear. And uh, if not, I'm happy to answer questions in the Q&A uh, afterward. So uh, let's take a step back. Um, uh, if you look at the history, we see that uh, the World Wide Web, yeah, it's not very old. Um, and it started by publishing content. Um, and then it started by creating structured content and uh, information architecture and trying to make sure that everybody can find what they want in a static frame of a site. Um, but that's not entirely correct. If you think about it, if you go into a store, the person that welcomes you in the store will actually take a look at the context on uh, who you are with, um, maybe uh, which questions you ask, and will then adjust him or herself towards you, to you as the end user. Um, so it's the same online. The website should actually look at the end user and adjust accordingly in real time towards whatever that person is looking for. Um, you can have a supermarket that is very well laid out uh, and have many, many rows and try to navigate into it. Um, but a person that tells you where uh, the spaghetti is, for example, is a lot more uh, powerful because you can actually go home a lot quicker because you know where to look. Um, so that's the same. Um, and if you look at the, the journeys of people that they uh, have online, uh, they probably have either referrals and they go into social media, there's maybe a Google search or paid advertisements, uh, then they visit the blog of your site. Ultimately, maybe they fill in the email address or contact details. Um, it goes into email flows or multi campaigns, um, then go back to the website or maybe through an app. This is like a, a cycle. Uh, um, and it, it would be really great if we can keep that profile of that person and the interest that this person expressed to us with consent uh, over all these different channels in an open way. Uh, so um, to recap uh, what we have as a, as a journey, and this is also what I will be using in the demo, but I'll be using a, like a couple of different things. Um, this person now we call Sophia and uh, she's preparing her wedding and is looking for either uh, how to make these flower pieces herself or maybe of uh, yeah, delegating this to uh, experts. Okay, fine. But she could come in through Instagram as you saw in the video um, and it would be cool if um, we also have that campaign uh, in the site itself. 
And for those that are active in marketing campaigns, usually they come in through UTM parameters. Yeah? So in the, the URL, you have query parameters called UTM campaign or UTM source. But the website itself often doesn't do anything with that. It's used in analytics and it's really great to understand where they came from, but it would be a lot cooler if we could actually act on that information across the different sites, but also across uh, marketing automation and beyond. So, okay, yeah, this person comes in, she converts, I can, uh, does a conversion, um, gets emails, um, and then we start nurturing uh, to make sure that this person keeps in touch with our brand and actually stays satisfied with uh, whatever the goal is of our business or organization. Uh, this is not only valid for e-commerce, this is also very much valid for government purposes, for example. Uh, imagine a site where you are trying to find a job. Uh, it would be nice if the site actually uh, remembers uh, what kind of pattern you're, that you're looking for, or at least gives you the insights. Uh, do you want to continue using this pattern or do you want to start from scratch? So um, that's all uh, part of that nurturing. Okay, so then personalization also can happen in newsletters or on the website. Obviously, there's many more profiles or segments or personas, what you want to call them. Uh, I won't go into detail. But uh, yeah, managing all these different segments across all these different channels is quite uh, yeah, challenging. But I really do believe that that's the direction that the, the, the entire digital world or the internet, uh, or like what you want to call it, is going. And I'm not the only one that thinks this way. And so on this blog, you also found a, can find a quote, uh, consumers expect personalization on and offline. Um, and brands that use data-driven campaigns, so not just, oh, I feel like we should do this, not really take data, analyze it, make decisions based on that, they're seeing that result. And so by using that deep data to build your personas, you're adding that emotional behavioral component. Right now, in Motic, you already are collecting a lot of data, which is the pages that people visit and the forms that they convert to. But you can go a lot, a lot deeper and a lot more detailed than that. And that's why we are uh, suggesting to add a customer data platform. Um, so more about that in a bit. How do you measure success if you are convinced? Yes, I need to do personalization. Um, yes, I'm gathering data. Um, but yeah, how should I even um, then prove to the business that this is working? You could hold everything in a spreadsheet, but you can see this is a, a very basic spreadsheet uh, that just takes the, the raw data of Google Analytics and maybe Lighthouse and gives you the, the, the one audience view. Uh, so there's no segmentation here or there's no differences based on personas. The same is valid for Hotjar. I think Hotjar um, is used by some of you. Uh, it's a tool to detect where uh, people click on a specific website and then gives you heat maps, which is great if you think that all the users are the same, but they're not. Eh? So you need a way to segment this information and say, okay, for the explorers, what's the heat map for that kind of persona um, or uh, for people that are looking to buy um, what's uh, their heat maps. And so you need some way to segment that information. Um, the same is valid for Google Data Studio. Uh, there, and if you just put analytics in there, it's great, but still everything is one big audience. Um, and that's not how it works. Uh, or at least I don't believe that it works that way. So what you could do, once you find out how to segment your information, and I'll show you how to do that, um, you could add this contextual information to all these tools. This is, for example, um, an example where we added segmentation uh, or these personas to Google Analytics and then have dashboards in Google Analytics based on those personas. And you can see that you can then measure the conversion rate or the goal succession rate, goal conversion rate, um, by each of these segments. Uh, on the left, you can see the personalization segments. And you can see also that the conversion rate of the second one is lower than the average one of the other two. Uh, this is not enough data to really tell you something, but you can at least already go deeper and analyze a lot deeper than uh, page by page. And so you can go over the journey of the, the whole site based on these personas and not on a page by page uh, or campaign by campaign basis. So, Let's take a look at what we want to add to the mix. I 
think you know that you need a website and uh, here I suggest uh, to use Drupal, um, but obviously you can use different technologies as well. Um, we are at Maticon, so we're all convinced that Matic is a really great marketing automation tool. And um, this is what we use for campaign building and to make sure that once people are converted, you can nurture them and make sure that they get the right experience. Now, uh, for the customer data platform, um, I have a suggestion uh, um, and one that actually works well in terms of the vision and ethics of an open source community and uh, it's an Apache project. Apache, you know me, is an open source customer data platform. Um, and yeah, the, the fun thing is that you pronounce it as you know me. Eh? Um, and it allows you to capture all kinds of events in a, a much deeper fashion than that Mautic does by default. Um, it also has consent management features. So if you have these cookie pop-ups, uh, you can actually store if the person accepted the, the cookies and also in to which detail. And so often you see that you can uh, have different categories in these consent managements, as in uh, I want to have analytics uh, or I want personalization or uh, I want advertisement cookies. You can store that in there to make sure that you have a legal basis to go back to if someone says I want to retract my consent or maybe change it. Um, this is valid for anonymous users. If you want to store this in the, the CMS, it gets tricky if your brand has multiple CMSs. Uh, but more about that uh, in the Q&A if you'd like. But here we are at the demo part. Um, so what I will show you is how to capture online behavior in uh, customer profiles. Um, I'll show you how to discover that intention um, and then how do you personalize your website experience? And then ultimately how to, to use that data and plot that data in a BI tool. So let's take a look at the first one, um, setting up the CDP captation. I bet you Nomi has, um, um, and I'll show you here. I bet you Nomi um, is this open source customer data platform. And uh, if we go to the drop solid implementation of this open source tool, um, I'll let it load for a bit. You will see that there is um, a whole configuration that is available for you. And um, the only thing you need to do to start the capturing uh, in this SaaS offering of Unomi is to add this script to your site. This could be done in Google Tag Manager or anything else. Um, if you run Apache Unomi completely independently, that's also possible. And they have also a capture script that you can uh, embed. Once that is done, everything that you do on a website, uh, so here, if you click around, uh, will be captured into that customer data platform. How that looks like, I can show you uh, here. Uh, so uh, this is from the Drop Solid site. You can see uh, today there was quite some events and people clicked here on marketing automation. Um, and yeah, you can see events are captured. So that's not very difficult and also not very different from setting up Google Analytics. Um, the key difference here is in Google Analytics, you only have the aggregates. In Apache Nomi, you have all the details. And so every single piece of data is actually stored and it's up to you to decide if you want to aggregate that or if you want to uh, remove it or keep it for, for example, three months. Okay, setting up the personalization and test it. Um, once you have all that data, you want to um, also create segments and um, create something with that data. You can see here that this is an interface for Apache Unomi on the DropSolid platform. Uh, Unomi itself doesn't come with an interface by default, but there are some open source tools um, that have uh, an application for interfaces. Um, if you look at uh, SaaS managed offerings, there is uh, Jahaya and then there's DropSolid. Now, um, to make it easy, uh, just to give you an insight into the rule building, and the UI is directly coupled to Apache Unomi API, so everything you see here can be done natively in Apache Unomi. But you can see that you can make rule buildings of, okay, uh, the city should be equal to Ghent and the language should be equal to Dutch. 
Um, so this is very static rule building. If you want to use assisted technology, um, you can see that you can create models in the drop solid platform um, and then uh, like find out, okay, what would be uh, the segments or the personas that you discover for me based on all that data. So big data analysis can happen for you. Um, and you can choose kind, lots of kind of parameters to play with this assisted technology. I'm not going into that here because this is um, a specific feature of the drop solid platform. So this is not what you can find out of the box with Apache Unomi. Okay. But uh, setting up the personalization and test it, and this is what we saw. Um, and then um, to set up the personalization in Drupal, which is the CMS that we chose, um, is as simple as downloading the Unomi module, um, which is on the drupal.org ecosystem, similar to Maltic plugins. Um, and then enable that for your website. Um, and I'll show you here. Uh, you can have then little buttons and you can say, I want to show this button only to that specific segment. Now, um, what I will do is I'll show you here in real time how that looks like. Um, so you can see that there's three buttons and I want to sh show the workshops only to people that are interested in workshops. And I want to show flowers and plants for your office only to people that come from a business to business perspective. So let's take a look. Oh, I need to refresh this page. Okay, so here we see that this Unomi segment selection is business to business. In the other case, it's uh, actually the workshops. Now, how does this look like for people that come in on this website? Here, we can actually test this from a marketeer perspective. Uh, so um, we're going to use a helper tool to define um, the segment. And this is also using uh, Unomi uh, specifics to actually set this up. Right? So Unomi has a, a cookie um, to specify the profile, but also the, the segment. And you can see here, if I switch to Mother's Day, or let me see, B2B. Yeah, then suddenly this button shows up. Yeah? So that's personalization in action. Um, there's a lot uh, like else we can do. Uh, also here, let me see. Uh, there's also forms that we can embed automatically or maybe show different kind of forms from Motic, but that's for in a bit. Now, um, to set up the personalization, and so um, we have the captation, we know how to use the personalization in the CMS and we can switch up buttons or switch up text or maybe show even different forms. Um, also, there is an integration for Motic and Drupal to show the forms uh, really natively. Uh, so that's what I showed you here. This form actually comes from Motic. Uh, so let me show you here. Uh, there's a free download nurturing tips. Um, you can also see here the, the workshop description or tutorial downloads. Uh, if we take a look how this form uh, behaves. If you haven't seen Matic before on, on forms, um, it's quite easy. There's fields that you can add and um, there's a lot you can do. Everything that you change here has a direct impact on the website itself, okay? Um, I won't go too much in depth here uh, as this is a basic Matic functionality to embed forms on sites. Um, but what we want to focus on is that you can actually couple the CMS with marketing automation with a customer data platform. So how to do that? Um, you can use the JavaScript API of Unomi, um, but it's also possible in, in the platform to say, uh, enable the Maltic integration. Um, this is how DropSolid handles that for you. And it actually sends the information from the customer data platform or of the segmentation into Maltic. So you can see here, these are the fields that we sent the information to. And if we then take a look in Matic itself, um, and this is the, the sample profile that we have, and we'll show you production data in a bit. Uh, you can see that the segment names uh, 
are actually distributed into Mautic. And then we can actually use uh, this information in our campaigns. So if we take a look at the campaign itself, uh, so now we have segmentation. We uh, are capturing data. We're segmenting that data. We know who that person is um, and what the interest is. So in Mautic itself, um, I can use that data segment or the, the custom profile or custom field on that profile to send different newsletters. Yeah, so this is a multi campaign, a newsletter uh, is sent. I'm looking at the field from that person uh, to see is this person an explorer or a business to business context. We know that the website changed uh, based on that context. We also know that the information flows into Mautic so we can uh, really go into a unified flow for a customer experience across all these different channels. Um, so that's what you can do. Um, also enabling Google Analytics information, um, as I showed you in that dashboard, is possible by just enabling this. And then you will get a dashboard similar to, um, uh, to this. Okay. Now, how to use that information then to your advantage um, to, to see, okay, what's going on on my site. And uh, for that, there is also um, the possibility to open up that data into your favorite BI tool. In this case, we used Google Data Studio. And uh, we know that uh, the customer data platform information flows back to Mautic, but also the Mautic identifier flows back into the customer data profile. So this is an information of the Drop Solid website. And um, we can see that all the information that we gathered uh, from all over the world, and we have geolocation functionality. Um, but you can see also here that from all these profiles, many of them are uh, apparently categorized as applicants or people that want to apply for a job at the Drop Solid site. This is obviously a bit different than uh, yeah, what we saw before in the demo, but it's real data. Um, so that's cool. But you can see there's also different kind of segments. Eh? So 35% of our visitors on the Drop Solid site are applicants. There's quite some technical decision makers. And then uh, there's people that have multiple segments, um, but maybe also yeah, community, which could be open source information. But Let's take a look at the Mautic integration on this dashboard. And um, let's take this person here of India. This person had two visits in two sessions. So apparently this person came back a couple of times. Um, and um, what's neat is that there is actually uh, a direct link to the profile of Mautic to go a lot deeper. And you can see this person indeed it's it's an IP address. We don't know who it is. Um, and here we also don't quite know uh, where this person came from. Um, but we do know that this person visited all these pages. Um, the reverse is also true. Um, and this is nice. But what if you can go a lot deeper based on a specific Mautic identifier? Um, so here you can see a summary of all Mautic identifiers with lots of events. And um, in this case, uh, I want to see this particular Mautic ID, eh? 107 771. So let's take a look at, at this particular profile. Again, it's anonymous uh, because I don't want to share any uh, real names. Um, but you can see in Mautic that this person visited this UX, UI designer uh, position quite often. And you can see uh, this is all the information we have in Mautic. But what if we can go a lot deeper and actually also find out what this person clicked on? And that's exactly what you have with the customer data platform. Uh, so you can see the same uh, events uh, here in the customer data platform. But you can also see that this was actually based on uh, a touch screen because there is a touch end and a touch start, um, which uh, kind of gives us the information that this is a touch screen. We have a lot more information here that we can add. Um, but you can also see what this person clicked on. Eh? So you can see that uh, this person looked at uh, different positions, see uh, yeah, where this person came from. 
Um, so a lot deeper. And uh, the cool thing is, because you have a lot more data points, you can also add uh, the browser name or the browser platform, for example, to that uh, information uh, and build your customized dashboards based on that. Uh, so now we have a way to get much more detailed information about a specific profile other than the Mautic captation. Uh, and here you can see, apparently this person came uh, from different devices, a Windows machine, a Linux machine, a Mac machine. So uh, most likely this is an iPhone versus maybe uh, an Android or something else. So yeah, that's uh, also available, but that would take us too much in depth into the customer data platform itself. So that's great. Uh, we have information in the customer data platform in Mautic. We can go either way uh, from Mautic to the customer data platform or the other way around. Um, and now we have a full end-to-end -end insight into our user journey and take actionable steps to improve conversion optimization. And so we have analytics, uh, there's marketing automation, there's a CMS, there's personalization, um, there's uh, campaign building. But what if you can go even further? Uh, um, what if we can go beyond this and build our user journeys across many, many more marketing tools? And before I explain this, I wanted to add some, some comments on uh, what Mautic does by default. So if we uh, go back to Mautic itself, there is a functionality in Mautic, which is called plugins. And there's many plugins, but it requires some uh, development to do um, all of these plugins or maybe to do direct integration with Dynamics or with any of the other ones. What you're seeing here is that uh, Mautic is trying to uh, give you easy access to these tools, but, um, and I just wanted to show you this image because I, I thought it was great. Here, let me uh, open up this image. Yeah, this is an image that shows you all of the different marketing tools that are out there in, I think, 2019. Um, if we take a look at uh, marketing automation, uh, you can see that there's many, many marketing automation tools out there. And somewhere in these logos should be Mautic. I don't know where it is, but it, it's probably there. Um, I don't think you can expect from Mautic to have support for all of these tools because they come and go, um, they uh, either live or die. Um, so that's almost impossible. For that, um, in, in Mautic, there is actually a, a quite a good integration with Zapier, but Zapier, uh, which is an integration hub and it provides different connections to different tools and many, many of these million tools that are out there, but Zapier is not open source. Um, it doesn't give you the full freedom that you have uh, because it's actually a managed SaaS application that doesn't allow you to either go offline um, or at least in a self-managed basis because you might have GDPR restrictions that are not allowing the data to flow outside of a specific uh, data center, whether that's clouds or something else, then uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Now, um, the solution for that, or at least my opinion on that solution, is an open source tool called N8N, um, which already has out of the box Mautic integration. So what you can do with that um, is that you can have custom workflows uh, that says, give me a context from Mautic and then do something with that. And you can see that here at the top. What is also possible is that you enable the webhooks functionality of Mautic and uh, use that information to start uh, workflows towards sending SMSs or going to all kinds of marketing tools. And uh, to show you what the support is of this integration hub, it's already massive. Uh, you can see there's support for Airtable, there's support for Lambda, there's support for uh, lots of things that also are already available in uh, Zapier, uh, including Facebook. Um, and if we are talking about a GDPR era, it also means that third-party cookies are actually now gone or almost gone. So that means that we have to integrate using these backend technologies 
uh, to large social platforms like Facebook or LinkedIn. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Facebook has an API called the conversion API. Um, they can no longer put the like button on your site and then keep track of all the visitors on your site and know who they are if they come back on the Facebook platform. Um, so for that, they actually have uh, requested websites that want to advertise or do retargeting in Facebook itself to make a connection between their backend system and Facebook or the conversion API so that Facebook still knows who visits your site. Um, for that, you do need this kind of integration and we could decide to build that in Mautic, but we could also use tools like integration hubs like N8N or Zapier to actually build those integrations ourselves because that world is very much dynamic. And uh, I think marketing automation should be powerful at marketing automation and then connect with these integration hubs like Zapier or N8N. Uh, so this is a, a list and it's, it's very exhaustive. It's open source and you can uh, run this yourself. Um, it has a fair use code uh, license um, and the maintainer is really, really great uh, in communication. So certainly uh, worthy of looking at. And now we can see that we filled in all these gaps of uh, how to go across all of these channels with all the different tools because we connected the profile using a custom data platform. We have websites that use that platform um, that integrate with the personalization and integrate with email conversion or conversion into marketing automation. Um, so we kind of cover uh, all of these channels. So this is what I propose for open personalization uh, with uh, marketing automation, CMS and customer data platform, which is Mautic, you know me and Drupal. Uh, plus an open integration hub to go to infinity and beyond, um, which I think is pretty cool if you have all of that up and running. Um, so how to do this yourself very quickly, and then we'll go into the Q and A. Um, you can use Motic. There is an open source CDP, which is you know me. There's open source Drupal. The connector between you know me and Drupal is also open source. The connector between Drupal and Motic is also open source. If you want to have best practices for GDPR compliancy, we have the open source Drupal distribution, uh, which comes with lots of best practices. There is the GDPR cookie compliance um, plugin also in that rocket ship that integrates with the customer data platform um, and gives you best practices on how to uh, like avoid Mautic tracking, but still have Mautic forms. Um, and then uh, there's a SaaS solution if you want to have all of this uh, ready and set up, uh, ready to go. Uh, you can do this yourself or use uh, SaaS software like DropSolids. A little bit about DropSolids. Uh, so we're uh, seven years or maybe eight years old now um, and growing. Um, and there's, there's yeah, still a very young company in terms of product development. Um, but we are, I think right now with 90 people and we have partners on three continents. If you're interested in some of the solutions that uh, I showed you, uh, please contact me uh, or look us up on our website and happy to have a talk. With that, um, I'm open for questions uh, if you have any and uh, hopefully you found this talk interesting. Thanks so much, Nick. Um, that was a very wonderful session, and um, it, it it was really nice. And um, I, I did learn one or two new things myself. So let's quickly jump into questions. So um, we have some few questions here, and um, the first one is um, coming from Katrine, and um, Katrine is asking, "Do you know if there is a Magento integration?" Magento integration with the you know me and, and Drupal is a question. I, I most likely should be the you know me. So it's most likely to be you know me. So so why you are answering that, I'd like to also know if there is also integration for WordPress since you talked yeah. about Drupal. Yeah. So cap capturing the data is as simple as putting the script on a site. 
And so if it's Drupal or if it's Magento or if it's WordPress, you can put the capture scripts on there, either the open source capture script um, or the one of Drop Solid. And so both of them uh, are similar to adding Google Analytics to any site. Um, Google Analytics also doesn't really care what technology you use uh, as long as it's available in the front end. However, if you want to add personalization, you need some deep integration on the in the back office to understand what kind of segmentations do we have, what segment is this for person that is visiting my site anonymously uh, in, and then make those different variations available in a production setting. And this is where it gets a little complex. Um, often in production settings, you have uh, tools like Cloudflare, uh, which have a CDN, uh, which is uh, doing caching of your site. Um, and also these kind of technologies need to understand that if this person is in a different segment based on the customer data platform, it should serve a different page. Uh, with Drupal, we know end to end how this works. With Magento and, and WordPress, it's a little bit different because um, I'm not an expert in those technologies. That doesn't mean that it's not possible. I don't think it works out of the box as I showed today. Hopefully that right. as an answer. All right, perfect. So um, Katrin is asking another question, and um, this time around, uh, wants to know: Can you speak a little about how you know me can be used to support email marketing? So he's lo looking at scenarios where you can be able to use you know me with Maltic for email marketing. So I am. Um, that's what I shared, but I'll I'll share my screen once more. Um, so remember the, the case of Sophia? Yeah? Um, somehow, you know me detected that this person is in the Mother's Day or Explorer segment. We uh, discussed how you integrate or send that segment along to Matic. So this is not manually. This is automatically filled in by you know me. Okay? Um, once you are there, we can actually set up personalized newsletters based on that profile or based on that field. Um, and let me show you here as well. So if the person is an explorer based on the segment name of you know me, which is a field in Matic, um, then this person gets a personalized newsletter, which is the newsletter of Explorer. You could also go a little bit different in Matic and do dynamic content based on these specific uh, profile properties. Um, but this is how we set it up. Um, I can show you this in practice. Um, I think newsletter, let me see if I can show you one here. This is a newsletter from uh, our company, uh, the, the Drop Solid company. And you can see that based on the language we switch and then based on the personalization segment of you know me that this person is in, in Mautic, which newsletter to send to uh, each person that is actually subscribed to the newsletter. Does it help? All right, that helps. Thank you. So a um, few more questions. So how does this relate with GDPR? So um, for that, let me open up uh, the screen again. So if you go in incognito and you go to the website of DropSolid, uh, you have to accept uh, what you want to have. If you don't accept anything, um, the tracking of your events should not happen. Mm, it shouldn't happen in Matic, but it also shouldn't happen in a custom data platform. If you accept everything, um, you need to store uh, where your consent is, uh, yeah, like who gave which consent. So let's show you how that works. Let me see if I can refresh. Yeah, so here we see that we're sending data to the customer data platform. Um, and let me just show you where these consents are stored. You can see that the customer data platform now knows that this person, even though we don't know this person's name, has granted consent for tracking this person on our site. Um, it also relates to the fact that uh, the, all this technology is first party, 
So all the cookies that you set are also first party and you're not sharing anything with any other company that might not comply with the GDPR rule sets, as in you are in full control. For large organizations or governments, this is very, very important because in this way, they actually um, have compliance and they actually have control over all that data um, and can even employ data scientists to do something with the data while knowing that all the data that is in there was coming from consented uh, people or people that gave consent. If you don't say, uh, yes, I agree, then nothing should be stored and people are seeing the anonymous version or the non-personalized version of your site and also the non-personalized version of the newsletter. So it's a choice. Um, all right, good. So let, let's move on to another question, which I have here. Do I need Drupal for this? Do I need Drupal or I can use it without Drupal? Well, so I, I think I kind of explained that with the Magento and the WordPress case, you don't need Drupal, but if you want to start quickly and know that everything is end-to-end -end integrated, um, that ecosystem actually works out of the box with all these technologies. All right, so another one, which version of Maltic does this support? Um, it supports version three um out of the box and uh, obviously also version four uh, because nothing really changed in that api uh to send the segments to or the custom fields okay so one final question i know you might have touched this earlier but let me ask you again how do i get started how do you get started um that's the the hard part uh, so it, it really depends on which uh, direction you choose either you do everything yourself or you buy uh, yeah, managed services, but the easiest one is to start capturing data. If you don't start capturing data, either on the open source version or on the managed version, there's not much you can do. Um, once you have that, you start exploring that data and start learning from that data. And from there on, it will become much more clear what you have and where you want to go. So uh, I think that's kind of the same with every kind of field of data science. If you don't have data, you cannot do the science. So start collecting data. All right. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, it's been a really inspiring and um, session, and um, I appreciate your time. I was also be able to learn one or two things about these sessions today. But but one thing I would like to ask you one more is you talked about the aspect of artificial intelligence. Can you talk more about that? Um, sure. So what, and this is very specific to the drop solid solution. Eh? So I, I don't want to wanted to touch too much about it as it could become a promotional talk. Eh? Um, but what we do is we take all that data of, you know, me, um, and we have a couple of machine learning, uh, experts here at drop solid that, um, try to find, uh, an algorithm that finds correlations in all that data. So that means if someone clicks on, um, yeah, all these workshops that you can see. Uh, this could be a persona interested in workshops without giving it a name. So it gives you the tag clouds uh, of all the words of all the sessions that are somewhat algorithmically correlated to each other. So there's people that are more into that. And then there could be other people that directly go to the store and, and say buy flowers and then done with it. So these are different kinds of behaviors. The artificial intelligence that, that we have or that I suggest that either you build is to look into that behavioral component uh, instead of the, the manual rule building of people coming from Belgium versus people coming from the United States. Uh, because it could be that you uh, are in uh, the, the same, uh, uh, looking for the same thing that I am looking, but the country doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, these artificial intelligence could help you with, is to add that behavioral component to that mix of all these connections of all this technology. So, so, so this is a topic that that I think we need to discuss more in um in the future of Mautic. So where we have artificial intelligence as part of um, Mautic core features. Um, thank you so much again, Nick. Um, it's been a wonderful session, and um, we appreciate your time.